I started a new series on last week, and I want to pick it up today entitled, I Got Away. A new series entitled, I Got Away. I want you to take really, really good notes, man. Take really, really good notes. We have some notepads in the bookstore. If you want to purchase one, you can put your sermon notes in. Pull out your cell phone. Pull out your iPad if you write. I believe it's better to have a long pencil than a short memory. Take really good notes today if you don't mind, okay? I Got Away, first note of the day, is a movement to shift you from the mindset of Resurrection Sunday into Resurrection Season. Help me, Holy Ghost. It is a mindset. It is a movement to shift you from the mindset of Resurrection Sunday into Resurrection Season. Now, if you were at church on last week, I read a scripture that so many people inboxed me and told me they had never seen. Most people didn't know that when Jesus was crucified, he wasn't the only one who was resurrected. But on the day that Jesus was crucified, the Bible tells us that other godly men and godly women got up out the grave too. I'm going to say this and only seven people going to receive it. If I don't do nothing else in 2024, I'm getting up. I wish I had a witness somewhere. If I don't do nothing else, I'm getting up. And the reason your neighbor don't feel you, because we all may not have the same reason that we need to get up in, but everybody watching and in here got a reason to get up. Here it is. My money's getting up. My peace is getting up. Relationally, I'm getting up. With my creativity, I'm getting up. This is my year to get up. So for me, it is not just Resurrection Sunday. I'm stepping into resurrection season, which means I am about to enter a season where the things in my life that were deemed dead that God is about to bless is about to be resurrected. But the resurrection story reveals to us how Jesus didn't just get up. Please write this. He got out. He didn't just get up. He got out. And what I've discovered is this is your season to discover that any area of your life that feels trapped can be transformed. When we say, I got away, I'm telling you that whatever area in your life that feels trapped can be transformed. What's the big idea, PMJ? Put this in your notes. The resurrection is a recognition of God's ability to transform what is a tomb for others into a womb for you. So when I say the resurrection, it is the recognition of God's ability to transform what is a tomb to others into a womb for you. Only five of y'all gonna catch this. That what others die in, he develops me in. I don't think you heard what I just said. That what others die in, he develops me in. This is why three of you may be frustrated, but a sense of relief is about to hit you because you thought what you were in was going to take you out. God put you in it not for it to kill you, but for it to build you. That he is, Michael, developing you. Now, can I free you? Can somebody tell me what's the difference between a grave and a ditch? A body. Y'all missed what I just said. The difference between a ditch and a grave is a body. The moment the body is removed from the grave, it becomes a ditch. And the reason people can't figure out how you are where you are is because the last time they saw you, it seemed like you were in a grave. But they didn't realize because God resurrected you, the grave you dug for me just became a ditch so what is a trap for others put this in your notes is transformation for you that's critical what is a trap for others is transformation for you so in other words the resurrection is not limited to salvation but it is how we experience transformation please write that type that the resurrection is not limited to salvation it is how we experience transformation and what I've discovered is everybody want to get up 
don't nobody want to come out. Mm. See, because in your eyes, getting up is on God. But I came to give you an announcement, getting out is on you. That it, what use is it for God to resurrect you if you just going to lay back down? Res resurrection. Watch when I tell you this. I believe, and I want you to hear everything I'm about to say right here. I believe God does not want to make us into a better version of our old self. He wants to transform us. He wants us to make us into an entirely new creation. I'm going to read that again. I believe God does not want to make us into a better version of our old self. I believe God wants to transform us. I believe he wants to make us into an entirely new creation. This means, listen to me, a change of our nature and a change at the heart of who we are. So what am I telling you? I don't believe God just wants you to be a better version of who you are. I believe what God desires to do in your life is to make you new. Can I ask you a question? Does the caterpillar become a better version of a caterpillar? Or does the caterpillar become a butterfly? See, and you got to be careful because there are certain people who like you as long as you upgrade, not elevate. See, because the caterpillar crawls, the butterfly flies. The caterpillar eats. The butterfly sips honey from tulips. So what happens is God is saying, I don't want you to be a better version of you. I actually want you to be new. What does that mean, PMJ? We have confused transformation with self-help. And most people don't want to be transformed. They just want to be better. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is if a better you is what you're after, you are limiting what God can really do in your life. No, I don't want God to take me from cussing a lot to cussing a little. See, because cussing a little means you are better. It doesn't mean you've been transformed. Y'all don't like me today. No amens today, but it's cool in the game. And what I'm trying to tell you is too many of us have become too comfortable with our issues, with our proclivities, and we know how to get so far out there and we know how far we can go before we get too far out there to where we can't come back. And God isn't trying to change us, but rather trying to make us new. And some people want you better instead of wanting you new because they understand if God just helped you crawl a little faster, at least you're still on my level. But God says like the caterpillar, I'm shifting you from crawling to flying. I'm shifting you from eating on this level to eating on this level. This is for three of y'all who are frustrated lately because you don't even realize why all of a sudden your taste change and where you used to go change and stuff you used to tolerate change. Why, Pastor Mike? Because God is transforming me. And if he's transforming you, please put this in your notes. I need you to understand the power and the principle of exits. The power and the principle of exits. Here's a beautiful quote by Dr. Henry Cloud, who wrote a book entitled Necessary Endings. It's a book I read. It'll bless your life. Necessary Endings. He says, entrances into new seasons must be preceded by exits from old seasons. He says, entrances into new seasons must be preceded by exits from old seasons. Make it make sense, PMJ. You cannot walk into anything new if you are afraid of walking out of something old. And many of you keep trying to figure out why you've been on this cycle for so long. Newsflash, you missed your exit. Y'all miss what I just said right there. You missed your Exit T, T, if you don't mind, can you run through that exit right there? God bless you. Just that, that's an exit sign. Just run through it. You got it. It should open for you. There you go. All right, it opened. Come back for me if you don't mind. Can you come push this door? That's an exit sign too. That's the exit sign. So do me a favor. Can you push that door right there? Yep, push that door for me. Mm, that one didn't open. Both of them are exits. But every exit ain't... 
ain't for everybody. And some of you are frustrated and God says, I would have been open the door for you, but it ain't you. You trying to bring people with you that ain't qualified to walk through that door. And God says, I'm trying to get you to step into a new season, but you got to be willing to let go of old places and old things and old habits. And I know you don't want to say amen because you comfortable around your friends who pacify your issues and make you feel good about acting a fool and have you feeling nice about the dumb stuff you do. But God, give me one person who going to say, I thought we was through with that this year. You said we weren't going back there no more. Well, I'm going to make a deal with you. This is my last time coming to get you. Because for me, I can't waste another month in 2024 staring in the wrong direction. Bump somebody and shout, take your exit. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, Michael, come forth. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. Why does God, Jesus, say his name? Because if Jesus don't say Lazarus and all he say is come forth, everything dead in the cemetery would have got up. And here it is, you feel bad because God is calling you out of something but ain't calling y'all out of something. Why are you worried that they don't understand your anointing and your call when God called you and wasn't a conference call? I'm preaching and you ain't received that. But I just need you to look down your row and shout, I can't miss my exit. My destiny is tied to my next exit. Favor is tied to my next exit. My anointing is tied to my next exit. My next idea is tied to my... And what if our ability to increase our faith for what's next is connected to us owning the faults in what's now? When we refuse to take our exit, we tend to settle for what's expired. Michael, when we refuse to take our exit, we settle for what's expired, define expired PMJ, no life, deceased, void, okay? I, I grew up in Central Park. You ever went to the refrigerator and saw milk? Then when you opened it, you could smell, Michael, that the milk, Michael, had expired. All right. So, so, so if you was like me, you try to shake it up to try to see, but, but, but no matter how much you loved <laughs> on that milk, no matter how much you tried to resuscitate that milk, that milk was past its expiration date. Okay. I want to ask you a question. I want you to ask you a question. When something is expired, you try to get more life out of it. If I told you it was poisonous you would have just put it down. Why does God have to label stuff poisonous for you to realize you can't hold it? Maybe the faith you need is wrapped up in your ability to take accountability today. In the same way God the Father provided an exit for Jesus out the grave, he also provided an exit for Jonah out of a fish. And in order to understand Jonah chapter 2, we got to unpack Jonah chapter 1. Because it is in Jonah chapter 1, the Lord gave a message to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying what? Verse 2, get up. Go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. This is critical. Look at verse 2. He tells Jonah, get up. Go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it. I have seen how wicked its people are. God gives Jonah an assignment and Jonah disobeys God. How do I know he disobeys God? Because right here in verse 3, it says, But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction. I want to ask you a question. He tells Jonah, 
go do something I know you don't like. I'm not going to get any amens right here, and it's cool in the game. I got tough skin today. I'm not going to have any friends, so it's cool. I've discovered that I got away is not about escaping, but enduring. When I say I got away, I got away is not about escaping out of it. It's about enduring it. The gospel is not a gospel of escapism, but rather the gospel is the gospel of endurance. That we become a church that only shouts that he brought us out. And I came to tell you something, won't nobody tell you. There will be times when God won't get you out of it. The church has conditioned people for escape, not endurance. And I've discovered that there will be seasons when God won't take me out, but he will step in it. Y'all don't believe me. Noah didn't escape the storm. He endured it. The three Hebrew boys didn't escape the fiery furnace. They still had to get in the fire, but guess what? They endured it. Daniel didn't escape the lion's den. He still had to be put in it. What did he do? He endured it. Ruth didn't escape her losses. She had to endure it. Jesus did not escape the crucifixion. He had to what? Endure it. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong but to the one who endures I know you ain't gonna like this this is the part of the message where I'm supposed to tell you God gonna make a way for you here's a word that you might not want to hear there will be certain seasons when God won't make a way for you you gonna have to put your big boy pants on sit in the middle of your trouble and endure it what if he don't pay the bill what you gonna do Turn your back on him or you're going to stand there and say, even if he don't, I know God can. See, there are two types of people sitting on your row. One of y'all only shout when he bring you out of it. But then one of y'all don't have to praise God while you were still waiting on him. I dare you to reach over your neighbor and high five another neighbor and say, endure it. Money low, endure it. People lying on you, endure it. Folk walk out your life, endure it. Family acting fake, endure it. Your body may be going through pains, endure it. I wish I had a hundred people who would just jump up a type. I will end. Yeah. You ought to just look down your row and tell them, endure it. And church, and church has conditioned you for the miracle. That's what they did because church is so emotional that we become a church that shouts on foolishness. Then we sit on substance. Even your television history is equivalent to your toxicity. You only watch stuff that got drama. You don't watch stuff that's substantive. Testimony service is antithetical to who God is sometimes. They come in church, praise the Lord, saints. My bill was due April 15th. They said, if I ain't pay it, they was going to turn it off. I went to the mailbox on April 14th. It was a check in the mail. And don't y'all know, not only did God pay the bill, but I had some money left over. And look at all y'all. Y'all ready to shout already? No, at Rock City, we're going to have real testimony services. Hey, God bless y'all. Bill was due March 9th. It's, it's off. Oh, don't nobody want to shout about that. Hey, praise the Lord, saints. I told y'all to pray for my relationship. We was going at each other. Yeah, we broke up. It didn't work. Don't nobody want to shout about that. Because you think God is programmed that every time you need him, he comes through. But sometimes God will never take you out of what he can develop you in. And the culture got you so ashamed that you feel like if you can't brag about what God did, you ain't got a testimony. Well, I'm getting free today. I've lived in some seasons of my life where water was cut off, lights cut off, me and my girl had to live at an extended stay, cars getting repossessed, folk laughing at me, no friends would answer the phone, but I've never seen the righteous with 
Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't got time to fake with you today. If you done ever went through something and it felt like God wouldn't show up, but God held you down, you ought to jump up and shout, yes! Endure it. I'm preaching if you're receiving. I said, endure it. I said, endure it. I said, endure it. I said, endure it. I'm done praying, God, get me out. If God always pulls you out of it, how you ever going to learn so you don't keep falling in it? I'm preaching. I'm preaching if you're receiving. And I want to move on. I can sense in my spirit I need to move on because new school Christians only like that feel good stuff, you know. You want the tweetables. You want stuff you can put on social media. But here's a reality check for you. You can't not work. You can't not be nice. You can't not be who God called you to be. Do whatever you want to do. Then think one 30-second prayer going to make God pull you out of some stuff. Just because you catching hell don't mean you living wrong. Sometimes you catching hell because God there ready to give you something bigger than everybody else. But he got to see if you can just sit in it. I feel my help coming now. I wish I had a hundred Christians who would just shout, I'm learning how to sit in it. Jonah gets a word that he don't like and he makes a decision. It's critical. Jonah gets a word from God. God says, I want you to go to Nineveh. People are scared of Nineveh. Because Nineveh was known for killing people. Nineveh was a dangerous city. Jonah believed that possibly the moment he showed up and didn't tell Nineveh what they wanted to hear, they would kill him. So what does Jonah do? He makes a decision. I know I ain't going to get no amens, but it's cool in the game. He makes a decision to go in the opposite direction. And we will not be a church that ignores your dumb decisions and try to make it look like God ain't good because you keep doing dumb stuff. Forget them. I'm a priest to y'all over here. Do I got any grown person in here who can say half the stuff that you don't like in your life ain't got nothing to do with God? God didn't make you pick them. God didn't make you sleep with them. God didn't make you buy a car you can't afford. God didn't make you walk out your family's life. Stop blaming God for your decent. Put this in your phone. A little more in the monitor. Put this in your phone. You are born looking like your parents. You die looking like your decisions. I'm teaching today if you're receiving. Mike, you are born looking like your parents. You die looking like your decisions. If you look at Mace, Mace looked like me. You look at Mike, he looked like his mama. You look at McKinley, she got a little me on her. You look at Biles, got a lot of his mom on her. Look at Xander, he got some me on her. But when I lay him across the altar, God forbid, in the next 70 years, I'm going on to be with glory. They not going to die looking like me. They going to die looking like their decisions. You didn't pick your family, but you have picked some of your problems. Y'all don't like me. And in the words of that bishop from Chicago named Bernie Mac, I ain't scared of none of y'all. But I am done seeing you walk in cycles and then leave church and leave God because you feel like he ain't answering your prayers. He did answer your prayer. You just keep making bad. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have to endure it. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to endure it. It's going to be some nights you're going to have to cry yourself to sleep. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's called life. There are going to be some seasons where you're going to fast and pray, and God going to hear your prayer, but God going to be silent. Why would God do that to me? Come here, Jesus. He did it to Jesus. Jesus on the cross, he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani, God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he knew if I pulled you out of that, oh my God, oh my God, 
Had he pulled Jesus off the cross, none of us would make it to heaven. Sometimes your suffering ain't got nothing to do with you. But God knows I got to let you go through it. Because if you survive it, everything around you going to another level. I'm not preaching to selfish folk. I'm only preaching to seven of y'all who feel a burden on your spirit. That when God bless me, everything attached to me coming to another level. I'm not telling you to shout for a house. Don't shout for a car. When is the last time you said, God, give me strength. Give me patience. Give me wisdom. Give me endurance. Jesus. Look what he says. Jonah runs. It's good. Jonah runs. God says, I want you to go to Nineveh. Jonah like, nah. I ain't doing that. Look at this. Jonah, am I doing okay? Jonah is more afraid of Nineveh than he is of God. All right, I, my mama was crazy. My mama was crazy. Growing up in Central Park, Green Acres, you had to learn how to fight. You, it was point blank. At some point, you had to know how to fight. I never forget the first time I got the skates ran up under me, boom, boom, put the hands on me. It was, it was ugly. I mean, I got, put the hands on me. I was a church kid. I ain't know nothing about throwing hands, none of that. Do, 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 do. It was over quick. You know, I'm... I went home holding. We had to wear blue and white uniforms at Central Park then. I had a hole in my blue pants, and we was poor. You couldn't just get another pair of blue pants. Like, just like that. You had two or three blue pants. So I had a hole in my blue pants, shirt dusty, had a little swell on my eye. I cried all the way home. I lived on 51st Street. I'm the, ah, ah, walking down the street. Ah, my friend Jamel consoling me. Jamel Lewis. Anybody know Jamel Lewis? I want you to front him because he didn't even throw hands with me back then. <laughs> He walking next to me doing what best friends do. Why they do that, man? Oh, I'm telling you, I almost, I, I'm like, you ain't do nothing. I'm crying, snot coming down my eyes. I go home waiting on my mama to say, come here. I got you. Mama said, why are you crying? They, 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 beat, they beat me up. And they, and they, they beat me up, mom. And, and she said, okay, 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 okay. And what you do? I said, I came home. She said, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow, go back to the school. Either you beat them up or you're going to have to deal with me. I'm in class looking at the bell like, God, I know I'm going to get whooped. It's only one problem. They're going to whoop me for a second. She's going to beat me all night. I didn't even wait for the bell to ring. I just walk up and snuck, pop, get some. Snuck them, and guess what I did? I stood 10 toes down, ran fast as I could to my house. My mama said, what you did? I said, I hit them. She said, I know you better. She gave me a hug, gave me some Roman noodles with some hot dogs cut up in it. The next day, got whooped all over again. But I was more afraid of my mama than I was of my enemy. And some of y'all keep disappointing God because you're most scared of what people are going to say versus God not being pleased. Question, why are you running? It's critical, ain't it? Why are you running? Jonah runs from God. Can you put verse four on the screen? I want them to see this, verse four on the screen. Verse four is critical. If you can put verse four on the screen, verse four, verse three, take me to three, let's go to three. It says, verse three, but Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction Look at why he's running. To get away from the Lord. Leave that up there for him for a second. He ain't running. He's running from his assignment. That's crazy, ain't it? Can I ask you a question? Who won't be? Because you won't become. He's running from his assignment. Jonah attempts to escape not the enemy. His assignment. How long you gonna stand on the sidelines and let everybody use you but God? That's rich, ain't it? Running from your assignment. Running, Jonah says, nah, this is too much for me. I don't think you can keep me if I get there. And Jonah goes in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. I miss old grandmamas. I know y'all grandmamas now, but y'all ain't necessarily grandmamas. 
you know, like you, like you even call yourself grandma. You, you come up with nicknames like glam mamas and, and mamas and granny, granny so-and-so and uh, I'm the poom poom. Like, no, no, no. Our grandmamas had real big mama. Ma dear. Hey, and, and so old grandma, see, they don't make them like you no more, grandma. You can probably cook, whoop, clean, pray, intercede. These new grandmamas be like, jo mama got to have a life too, Jody. No. Old grandmamas put the fear of God in you. They to tell you stuff like, hey, you better watch yourself. You know God watching you. Remember you and cuss back in the day? Because you used to feel like everywhere you went, she would look at you and say, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro. Hey, your arm's too short to box with God. She made you realize, look at the text, that you can't run from him. It's critical. He gets, tries to get away from the Lord and he went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving Tarshish. He bought a ticket. This is critical. He bought a ticket. This is critical. You missed it. He bought a ticket. You missed it. It's critical. He bought a ticket. You missed it. He bought a ticket. You missed it. He bought a ticket. You missed it. Look at the scripture. I'm going to read it again. He goes away from God. Where does it take him? It's right here in the scripture. He went the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Watch this. He went down. Whenever you go opposite of what God is calling you, the only result is for you to go down. Y'all don't like me. So watch this. Watch this. I'm going to free you. I'm going to read it. He goes down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish and he bought a ticket. A wrong decision now has him going down and costing him. If he listens to God, he goes up and God makes a way. He goes opposite from God, he goes down and he has to pay for it. I, I'm gonna say this, only three of y'all gonna receive it and it's cool in the game. If I could get all my dumb money back. Oh, you don't even want to say amen right there. It's three. In the, I only got, see, that's a balcony shout right there. If I can get my dumb money back, why PMJ, seven of us can testify not listening to God will cost you something. And the question I want to ask you today is how much is it going to cost you before you make the right decision? I never forget an old preacher said this when I was seven years old and I woke up sleeping on the back pew of Revelation Missionary Baptist Church. I woke up for three seconds. I heard an old preacher say this and I never forgot it. He said, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. I ain't preaching to everybody, but five of us going to be free today and say, I done did some stuff that cost me cost me. That's why the next time somebody asks you to do something stupid, you just need to smile and say, that's too expensive. That, that's just too that's just too expensive. What you mean it's expensive? All we doing is going to dinner. That may cost me my peace, cost me my youth, my edges, and my sanity. I, I can't nah. That's just too expensive right there. A am I preaching to anybody? It costs something. That's why the frustration you're feeling lately, that's for six of y'all who done went out recently. And while you sitting there, you're like, I don't think this is me no more. You literally just sitting there like, nah, this ain't my scene no more. It's some in me is trans. Come on, it, 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 this costs too much. What, what? If you're gonna go out, let's just do the math real quick. If you're gonna go out, let's just say you're going out. Uh, you gotta, gotta get your hair done. That's what, two some, two some, 253, whatever. Whatever you're gonna do, then you gotta get lashes. That, that's something. Then you got to get eyebrows, okay? Booyah. Then you make sure your hands look nice, right? That's, that's the fellas. Edge up, fresh cut. Uh, Jordan ones. That's three or four, five right there. Jeans look nice. Rims shine after you do that. Then you got your makeup. Got to beat your face. Then you got to get an outfit. 
outfit. There it is right there. You got to get the outfit. Then you got to take care of the one friend who ain't never got none, but you don't want to go nowhere without him. Who am I preaching to? 70 of y'all can't shout because you're the friend. It's cool. So, so now you got to make sure he's straight. Got to make sure she's straight. Okay, you got yours too, so that's times two, right? So then now you got to gas your car up. Some of y'all got to find a babysitter. Then you finally go out. You got to pay to get in. All right, some of y'all don't have to pay in based on how you look to the person standing at the door. You got to pay to get in. Once you get in, fellas, you got to impress them. Now you buying bottles. Now you wilding, trying to make it look like you got it. Now you buying her drinks. Then she doing this. Now you got child support. You got therapy. All because you keep choosing to go in the opposite direction. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is many of you are paying fees for stuff that God never wanted you to be in in the first place. My God. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is God wants to transform you. And when I say God wants to transform you, what I've discovered is many of us trust Jesus to save us. We, now, we have not trusted him to transform us because sin is a heart issue. Being stuck is a head issue. Michael, sin is a heart issue. <laughs> Being stuck is a head issue. All right, which means whenever you're getting ready to come out, or whenever you want to come out of something, you don't come out feet first. You come out head first, okay? All my mamas give me a what what? All mamas, mamas who's given pregnant. I've had five kids, right? Five kids, been blessed to see them all born. All five of them didn't come out feet first. All five of them came out head first. If your baby comes out feet first, the risk of them surviving is cut because they're possibly being choked upon the exit. Which means that baby was comfortable in her environment. The body said, as comfortable as you are, it's time for you to go. Baby like, nah, I'm good. Body like, either you gonna kill us or you finna have to make an exit. Body pushes the baby out. The baby comes out, watch this, head first, not feet first, which is why so many of us keep feeling like life is suffocating because we keep trying to go to new levels. Feet first. Instead of... You trying to stand on something you don't even believe. Y'all don't like me today. No, no, you trying to stand on some, no. So what happens is you won't thank God until you walk feet first into a room. What I'm telling you for is before your feet touch the room, your head got to shift to being in the room. That way when your feet get in the room, you walk in there like you know you belong in. I just need you to shout, I'm coming out head first this year. That before my feet touch it in my mind, I'm going to already be preparing for it. Put scripture on it, as a man think up in his heart. Jonah, Jonah, he goes down to Joppa and he pays to go. And I ask you a question, what's the cost of a bad relationship? What's the cost of missed opportunities? What's the cost of not being able to get six months to a year back? Jonah's issue isn't he's just running. Put this in your notes, he's running from his assignment He's running from God. He's running. He goes down to Joppa. He has to buy a ticket. He gets on the boat. And verse 4 says, the Lord, my God, hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm to threaten to break the ship apart, fearing that their lives, fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their God, this can preach, for help and threw the cargo over both. What do you do when the storm you in 
ain't even your storm. I'm preaching. I'm preaching if you receive it. I got seven guys in here who like, Pastor, you preaching to me already. What do, can you imagine? You get on your boat. You make a trip, come back. Make a trip, come back. Make a trip, come back. Out of nowhere, Jonah get on your boat and all hell break loose. You want to know what I really want to ask six of y'all? Who you done let? I need me a better church. I'm preaching way better than y'all acted today. Who you done let on your boat? This is critical, PMJ. Why? Because it's one thing for you to go through a storm that the devil sent. If the devil send a storm, I can talk to God to get me out of the devil's storm. But what do you do? It's right there on the screen, verse 4. When God is the one sending the storm in your direction. Y'all, 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 y'all missed that. If the devil take me through, I can reach for God. But who you going to call when God the one whooping you? You want to know the craziest thing I ever seen? I never forget my baby boy Mason. He's not my baby boy, but he's the baby boy of the big three. Never forget he made a mistake when he was little, right? Made a mistake when he was little, and I'm one of them daddies. I rarely whoop my kids. I, I'm more of a talk person, try to just get through their heart. But he got me to the point where I was done talking, right? I said, come here. I said, I, I, boom, I gave him a talk, boom. Hit him one time, hit him two times, and he did the craziest thing I ever seen. He's literally reaching for me while I'm whooping him. So I'm hitting him, boom, like that, that, like, what? What was that, that? And it confused me. Because I thought if somebody was whooping you, you would run from them. But when the one you trust is doing the whooping, you realize I can't get out the whooping. But the least I can do is try to keep my hands on you. I'm preaching if y'all ever see that. And they are on the boat. Storm break loose. Can you imagine the sailors trying to sail and the winds blowing, boom, water hitting the boat, the boat's breaking, they panic. The scripture says they, open your eyes, start calling, listen, on their gods. Y'all be missing it. They on the boat calling on every god but God because they God can't stop what his God's doing. Finally, watch this, look at the ineffectiveness of what they believe. When they, God, can't handle the storm, the scripture says they start throwing the cargo overboard. Pause, I want to parenthetically digress. Jonah is not on a cruise ship. He's on a cargo ship. What, what, what does that mean, PMJ? He is hiding on a boat that has purpose. I want to ask you a question. What type of ship are you? Are you a cruise ship? <laughs> Meaning that people get on you for entertainment. Or are you a cargo ship? I'm carrying something that's full of purpose. Yeah. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. And Jonah, this is critical. They're throwing stuff off a boat. Put this in your notes if you don't mind. I'm going to send you home. The devil storms are sent to put you under attack. God's storms are sent to get your attention. That was rich. Whenever the devil throw a storm in your life, he's trying to put you under attack. When God sends a storm, he's trying to get your attention. Jonah is making the wrong decision to run the wrong way, not recognizing how his bad decisions are impacting everybody else. This may be a pressure point for six of y'all because you shouted when I said the favor was on you to bless everybody. But now I want to tell you the responsibility is on you to do right because you can hurt everybody. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. They can go out there and do whatever they want to do. You can't. When they do it, if they fall, they fall. If you do it, everybody fall. The favor ain't the same. Y'all miss what I just said right there. It ain't the same. And I know you feel pressure. 
And I know you feel the anxiety. And I know you're saying to yourself, it ain't fair. It's like I go to everybody rescue, but don't nobody come to my rescue. God said, because I called you different. And don't ever run from that responsibility. This is critical because he tears their life up. Listen to me. All my entrepreneurs, give me six minutes and I'm going to get you out. All my entrepreneurs, listen to your pastor. If they're throwing cargo overboard, that means they just threw away their inventory. Watch this. Which means when they get where they're going and don't got these people's stuff, they going to have to pay for it. You better get people off your boat. Who come in your life and wreck your life and then just leave you to clean it up. Michael, and I know what you want to say. Pastor Mike, but they apologize. I praise God for that apology. But here's the question. Who going to fix this? <laughs> and I discovered that some of us need people to help us recover. A couple areas we need to recover. Number one is emotional recovery. Put that in your notes. Emotional recovery. Define that, PMJ. Emotional recovery. Some people will hurt you so much that you'll never desire to trust people again. I felt God on that. That's emotional recovery. They hurt you in such a way, and there's a couple people on the stream and a couple people in this church that in your heart of hearts, you never really recovered emotionally. So for you, trusting is hard. No matter how good people are, some in your spirit like, nah, not again, not again. No, some of you need financial recovery. Some damage you make and go through make a generous person mind their business. Y'all don't hear what I just said. See, when you go through financial storms and people ab abuse your generosity, it makes a generous person just mind their business. Make that make sense. Where the old you would hear about something, you would just say, L let me help you. The new you now is like, nah, just go on. Nah, Some of you have dream recovery. Some damage impacts our strength to believe again. Some of us got faith recovery. Some damages impact our ability to be compassionate. Jesus. Look what happens. I'm going to read the scripture. We're going to go home. Verse 6. So the captain went down after him. Jonah, the storm is breaking loose. And Jonah is at the bottom of the boat sleep. The captain looks at him and says, how can you sleep at a time like this? I know seven of y'all really want to take out running right there. With all I got going on in my life, how? Can you sleep? He says, get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Verse 7, the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended God and caused a terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah was the culprit. Verse 8, why has this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What's your nationality? Verse 9, Jonah answered, I am Hebrew. I am a worshiper of the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. Verse 11, Jonah says, this can preach, since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked, what should we do to stop this storm? After all of that, Jonah says, throw me into the sea and it will become, I know this terrible storm, it's all my fault. That's what I'm supposed to tell the church up right there, okay? That's what I'm supposed to say. And sometimes God's getting ready to make the people in your life take responsibility for the storm. No, we're not doing that because I see tension in the text. I got beef with Jonah. When I get to heaven, me and Jonah are going to talk. Because I'm going to roll up on Jonah and say, Jonah, everybody's shouting about your story, but I see weakness on you. I see coward on you. He gonna say, what you mean you see weakness on me? You a grown man, right? Jonah gonna be like, yeah. I said, you're a grown man, right? Jonah gonna be like, yeah. I'm gonna say, you a grown man, right? Jonah gonna say, yeah. So you mean to tell me you know it's your fault. You know you the reason we catching hell. 
and you got the audacity as a grown man to look at us and say, throw you off the boat. Why you just didn't jump? <laughs> you mean to tell me you know you the reason and you still ain't got enough love for us or strength to say, I'll remove myself. That's why you got to be careful of people who tell you they the problem but won't fix it. It's not my job to help you fix what you missed. Am I preaching to anybody? Jonah, if you really love me, you should have just jumped off the boat. But Pastor Mike, I don't know what to do. They keep telling me if I'm not happy, I should leave. Why they just won't leave? No, don't let them trick you into making a decision that they won't make themselves so they can sleep better at night. No, if you cause causing storms in my life, remove yourself. I'm preaching to somebody. Throw me in the sea and the sea will come. He says, I know. It's all my fault. And I got to free you right here. I got to free you right here. Because the storm is attached to his disobedience. Did you catch that? The storm. He says, the moment you get me off this boat, it's going to stop. This may be a scary statement, which means when you got the wrong people on your boat, I don't care how much you pray, how much fasting you do, until they off the boat, that storm going to stay. Watch this. 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 If you're going to own this season of your life, you got to get rid of three habits of negative thought patterns. What's the first habit? Please put this in your notes. Here it is. Number one, stop making everything personal that's rich Jonah thought his prophetic gift belonged to him mama God tells Jonah to go prophesy Jonah like nah I ain't prophesying to them now I prophesy to them but I ain't prophesying to them he thought his gift was his Michael hear me when I say this You make things personal when you make statements like, this always happens to me. Why me? That's what, that was wrong, but I'm not wrong. This is when you attach your identity to your issues. I had to get to a point in my life where I had to stop taking stuff personal. If I'm not picked for something, it's not because they don't like me, they just had to make a decision. <laughs> no. Stop making things personal. Number two, put this in your notes. Stop making everything permanent. Ooh. Jonah didn't believe that God could ever change the people of Nineveh. See, Nineveh was evil. So Jonah felt like it was permanent evil. Like God couldn't fix them. Nobody gonna like this. This is when you say stuff like this will never change. Or in other words, you got a Jonah mindset. Once a liar... Once a cheat, always, no, no, they mess up one time, don't ever trust them again. Like God is God enough to change you, but not God enough to change them. So you make everything permanent. Can I ask you a question? Who's living in the prison of your perception? Number three, stop making everything pervasive. Pervasive is when our negative thoughts begin to spread. Jonah was so focused on the pain of the past that he rejected God's plan for the future. Jonah had to get to a point in his life where he literally said, yo, it's my fault. It's my fault. I can sit on this boat and come up with every excuse. Jonah could have said, well, maybe the storm breaking loose because y'all worship a different God. Nah, y'all right, it's my fault. And I feel in my spirit that maybe you're one moment of accountability away from the storm stop.
because real spiritual maturity is the ability to stand flat foot and say, that was my fault. That was my fault. Dad could have been a little bit more involved. Maybe dad could have did that. That's my fault. Hey, man, I love you, man, but I, I was just trying to get it, and so-and-so, that, that was my fault. That was my fault. How are we going to grow if we both so busy blaming each other? Now, let me free you because some of y'all going to leave here thinking every time a storm breaks loose, you got to throw somebody out your life. Who thought that real quick, that quick? You was like, I got to throw some people out of here real quick. Please put this in your notes if you don't mind. You have natural storms, demonic storms, God storms. It's beautiful outside right now. If it break out rain in this evening, are you gonna go outside and say, God, what did we do to deserve this? Or are you just gonna grab an umbrella? Because that storm is what? Natural. Certain storms you're gonna go through because you're living. Every parent give me a what, what? Them gonna be some storms. Kids gonna make decisions that's gonna make you wanna just go berserk. Storms come with parenting. If you're in a relationship, storms come with being in love. If you get a job, storms come with employment. Storms are natural. So every time a storm breaks loose, don't look for somebody who's the problem. Discern if it's God or not. Because God sends storms not to attack you, but to what? Get your attention. God, I pray I said something today that blessed them. I pray somebody watching me right now can live their life from this day forward, realizing the power of their decisions. Jesus, you made a decision. You looked into that cup and saw all of the pain and hell you were going to go through. And for a quick second, you said, God, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But then you made a decision. You said, nevertheless, thy will be done. So God, I speak the wisdom to start making better decisions to be who you called us. I pray right now, God, as you continue to keep your hand on our life, all of you and none of us. God, I pray right now for the person because there are three types of people in life. Somebody's headed to a storm somebody's in a storm and somebody just got out a storm wherever we find ourselves God I pray grace peace and favor for you know the plans that you have for us and that is plans for us to prosper to be all you called us to be it's in Jesus name we pray clap your hands stand to your feet let's get ready to go home y'all come on were you blessed today church come on give God a hand clap of praise right there do me a favor before you leave here today, if you don't mind, if everybody can bow your head, you may be here and you don't know Jesus. This is so important to me. If you really want to know the truth, I don't care about arenas being filled. I don't care about being a hot church. I don't care about being Pastor Mike Jr. None of that. What I care about is seeing lives transform. I love seeing people give their life to Jesus. And you may be here this morning and you don't know Jesus. And I'm telling you, this is a decision that can change your life forever. Hear me when I say this. God doesn't have grandchildren. He only has sons and daughters. Meaning that when it's your time, you're not going to be able to stand before God and say, well, my grandmama was faithful. God going to want to know what you did. What decision did you make? So you may be in this room or you may be online. You may be in overflow and you don't know Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. All I want you to do is just slip your hand in the air and just pray with me. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Make me over again. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that you were raised from the dead with all power in your hand. And right now, I am saved. That's all it took right there, I'm telling you. So watch this before you leave, before you log off. Let me show you what you just did. You just got up. But the problem is, are you going to come out? And come into church, Devo Energy, uh, Pathway to Purpose, connecting with good people, that's what helps you come out. 
If you're watching in line, I don't want you to come up in front of everybody. All you got to do is just text HOME to 28950. I have a team that's going to pray with you, that's going to contact you. We want you to know that we love you, and I believe that the best is yet to come. Here's a good place to clap. Last Sunday, they're telling me over 480 people gave their life to Jesus. It's a trend going on now where churches are trying to be seeker friendly. What does seeker friendly means? They want their church to be so friendly that anybody who doesn't even know who God is would just want to come. So when they market their church, they try to do it in a way that just looks like a cool place to go. I believe in Jesus. And, and we may be young, we may be cool, but I still believe in God. I still believe that we have to live right. I still believe that when you make a mistake, you need to repent, get on your face before God and trust God. And this is the crazy part. As crazy and as young as we are, all of us know when it'd be wrong. Like, look, God, let me get back right. And I'm telling you that falling in love with God is still the best thing I've ever done amen so listen I'm so excited about what God is doing all my parents with teens can you throw your hands up in the room do me a favor man I'm trying my best I'm raising three teenagers now uh, 17 16 and Mason to be 15 in June uh, so even when I go to their rooms I'm hearing music uh, they, they kids just like your kids please don't think my kids at home listening to Fred Hammond all day like <laughs> As soon as I get up them steps, I be hearing everything. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna pull up in a Chevy. Like, all right, cool. Uh, but one of the things I'm learning now is before I criticize, I try to give them something. I call it making an exchange. One of the things I did with my teens this week is I told them, man, to venture them drop something. Uh, and that's some good gospel hip hop music right there, man. So to all my parents, I think it'll be super dope literally man i can say this from the bottom of my heart they love god they love people uh right here you see all my young people on the front right here they starting to make a section just for young people one of their goals is now that when they get to church they want a whole section just for teenagers where they can be around some people just like them what's the goal pastor mike i'm gonna always tell you the goal the goal is we have a sanctuary downstairs that can probably seat about 250 people outside of the overflow that many of you haven't seen. So what our goal is, we're gonna try our best by the end of this summer to make sure they got their lights, they got their microphones. Last week at Easter resurrection service, here's the good part, upstairs with your kids, each praise team leading worship last week. So hear me, all my parents, listen to me, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Look at them, them young people right there. Look at them, look cool, love God, excited, got their glasses on, they pumped about Jesus, got their outfits. And hear me when I say this, what are we going to do? We just going to look at them, live, and just pray for them, or we going to try to create a place where they want to be a part, man. So that's our goal right there. So all my parents with teens, get them involved. Start, start just making little, hey, have you heard this right here? Grab their phone, download it for them, and say, just listen to this and tell me what you think. I'm trying my best because I realize this is a strong statement I'm finna make. I can be everything in them boys' life, but they passed it. So you never, I'm their daddy. I can't, be, I can't play that game. It's hard sometimes to see me as pastor when I just told you to clean up your room as a daddy. So that's why I made sure I invested in a good youth pastor. And I sat down and looked at him and said, bro, I need you to win my kids too. Because I'm understanding they have a lot coming at them this day. They got to compete with peer pressure at school, peer pressure online, the culture. But I'm bold enough to say the devil can't have none of our babies. You ought to shout, I receive that in Jesus' name. So hear me, as we build this team ministry, a lot of my 20-somethings, 30-somethings, I'm going to be asking y'all in the next couple of weeks to get involved. I want them to see y'all. I want them to see that y'all went to school or you got a good job or you living right or you cute but you still saved or you still doing your thing for God. I want them to see that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times to our young people, I ask them, I said, why is church hard for you? They say, everybody just looks sad sometimes. You remember growing up, it like everybody who loved Jesus was ashy and didn't have Vaseline. Nah, we're going to show them that we balling, blessed, and saved in Jesus' name. So I love you so much.
God bless you. God keep you. I really believe that God has something special in store for you. If you're giving today, you know how to give. You can text I rock with the amount you wish to give. I'm a tither. I put God first in all that I do. I'm just crazy enough to believe if I honor God first, he'll protect everything else. And that's how I live my life. I want to pray a special prayer. And it's this, Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Hug somebody, tell you love. I see you, Los. Come on, give them some love right there. Come on, y'all. Man, powerful. The amazing word from yes. our pastor, yes. Pastor Mike Jr. It's my fault. Yes, Listen, I'm my not fault. Finger at nobody else. I'm nobody. the problem. He sings the song. The I'm the problem. And I know that word blessed you. It may have challenged you. Yeah. But that's what we need sometimes. We need messages that challenge us. Definitely. And help us grow and have strong faith. So if that message blessed you and you may say, you know what? I want to give my life to, to yeah. Christ. I've been the problem. It's my fault. Uh, I've got some things in my life that I want to get better at. Yeah. Or you want to be a part of this ministry. How can they do that? Hey, you can do that by texting home to 28950. Yes. This is the best decision that you will make giving your life to Christ or getting involved. So text HOME to 28950. Yes, and like Pastor Mike just said, you know, uh, I believe the reason we're able to reach people that are watching all over yeah. the world is because of your faithfulness in giving, because yes. of your faithfulness and commitment to what God has called us to do. Yes. So if you're giving today, you can text IROC in the amount to 28950. That's IROC in the amount to 28950. We say it all the time at Rock yeah. City. When you give to Rock City, you don't give to a church. You give through, through a, a church. church. You see all that God is doing in our ministry. Now, family, of course, let's not forget to support Tavici and yes. Jess Cordell. Got the brand new EP out without, new. A without a doubt. And listen, do me this favor. Don't just you get it, but share it with somebody. Put yeah. it on your page. Tag them on your social media. Let's let them know that the Rock City family is behind them 1,000%. Yes. Tomorrow, we got 721. Hey, we have Devo Energy. Devo Energy at 721 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yes. We're going to look at this word right here. It's yeah. my fault. We're going to talk about it all week long, okay. about how we can apply it to our daily yes. lives. Family, we absolutely love you. We thank you for rocking with us. Thank God you. God showed up once again. Always. Like he always does. Until next time, we love you. God bless you. Peace. Peace.